We have His Worship, Donovan Mitchell, who is here with us. Welcome. And uh, my aunt, my wonderful, beautiful aunt, my beautiful cousin Camille, and her handsome husband, Chris, walked in after. I just want to welcome them. Auntie Norma, Chris, and Camille, welcome to church today. The leader of the opposition should be coming in a little later on. After the sermon would have been finished, we will allow him to address the congregation. The most pleasant task has been given to me today. And that is to introduce and present to you our speaker for today. He is tall, dark, and handsome. He's not yet married, but he has been spoken for. He serves as the recruitment officer at the Northern Caribbean University, one of the elders at the Berry Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church, a very good friend of mine, one who loves the Lord, one who loves young people, and he wants to see people saved in the kingdom of God. The person of whom I speak is Elder Donneal Linton. He served many years ago as the president of the Manchester AY Federation, and he did an outstanding job, a very intelligent young man. And today, the Lord has prepared a message for us through him. I crave for him your undivided attention. And I'm confident that after he would have finished here today, our hearts would have been truly blessed. Just before he brings the word of God to us, the Mandeville male chorale will give us the song of meditation. May God bless you.
life to tell for Jesus. I want my life. I want my life to tell for Jesus. That everywhere I go, men may His goodness know. I want my life to tell for Jesus. To wealth and fame I would not plan, but I would know God sees. time. What do you say? Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. It is truly an honor to be worshiping with you, to be with God's people, including many of our public servants who we are happy to see. I believe heaven is rejoicing. Our public officials, which include also our health servants as well. Good to see you, Mr. McLaughlin. Today is a special day. This day we will be celebrating, we will be praying more earnestly for our men. And what a time it is to have men's day. For if there was ever a time when we need to be praying for our men, that time is now. The world needs godly men. Did you hear me? The world needs godly men. One writer puts it this way, he says, the world needs godly men who cannot be bought or sold Godly men whose word is their bond. Godly men who put character above wealth. Godly men who possess opinions and who have a will. Godly men who do not hesitate to take chances. Godly men who will not lose their individuality 
when they are in a crowd. The world, he says, needs godly men who will be honest in small things just as in great things. Godly men, he says, who do not believe that shrewdness and cunning and hard-headedness are the best qualities for winning success. Godly men who are not ashamed or afraid to stand up for the truth. Godly men, finally, who can say no with emphasis when everyone else is saying yes. How do we cultivate godly men? Our passage for meditation is from the book of John. John chapter 5. We will spend some time in the first nine verses of John chapter 5. You are reading with me. We begin with verse 1. The Bible says, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was at Jerusalem a, by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel, verse 4 says, went down at, the, at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Verse 5, and a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years, when Jesus when Jesus when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had now been a long time in that case he saith unto him wilt thou be made whole the impotent man answered him sir I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. And immediately, and immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath day. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for the power of your word. Speak to us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If we were to take a trip back in time to ancient Jerusalem, at about the northeastern corner of the city, there was what was called a sheep market with an entrance known as the sheep gate. This gate was almost, some people say, a door of delivery where sheep and other livestock would be taken for sale. It was a noisy, very busy, an active place, foul-smelling and often crowded and congested. The rich, the famous, the destitute, the elite, the downtrodden in society would all converge inside this sheep market. Archaeological remains, the historians will tell us, of Herod's Jerusalem are scarce, but the historians tell us that there was a pool that was known as the Pool of Bethesda. 
This pool is the setting for the passage that we just read. It was located along the eastern side of the city, known as a place called the Fortress of Antonia. Bethesda, they say, means house of mercy. Somewhere, the pool's water, they tell us, was supplied by a nearby thermal spring. The pool, the Bible tells us, had five porches, and archaeologists have discovered that they, there was a thermal spring which supplied the water that led into the pool. Very often, this thermal spring would bubble, the temperature would rise, and so it would cause the surface of the water in the pool to be disturbed. Somewhere, someone started a rumor. There was a rumor that someone started that said whenever the pool began to be disturbed, whenever the water in the pool bubbled, there was, it was because of an angel who came down to touch or trouble the water. The rumor continued and the rumor says that whoever went into the pool first would be healed. There is no record anywhere scripture or otherwise confirming that anyone was healed from this pool which means that those who gathered at the pool the lame the the paralyzed the crippled the invalids gathered there because of some hearsay hope gathered there because of a rumor that someone started that whoever stepped into the pool first would be healed Ellen White writing in the desire of ages describes the scene like this she says at certain seasons the water of the spool were agitated and it was commonly believed that this was the result of supernatural power and that whosoever first after the troubling of the pool stepped into the waters would be healed of whatsoever disease he had the writer continues by saying hundreds of sufferers visited the place but so great was the crowd when the water was troubled that as they rushed forward they trampled underfoot men and women just as they were they trampled men, women, children, weaker than themselves, all in an effort to get to the pool first. Many could not get near the pool, she says. Many who had succeeded died upon its brink. There were some who spent the night in these porches, creeping to the edge of the pool day after day in vain hope of relief. Look with me as we see the shocking sight when the waters were troubled. People who were in their misery, the wretched, the, the paralyzed, the diseased, the ailing. Look as they fight one another to get inside the pool first. Look as they scuffle to beat each other in an effort to get to the pool. You see, the enemy had successfully planted a seed of discord resulting in them believing that whosoever first entered the pool would be healed before the pool was troubled every man was a brother before the pool was troubled every woman was a sister but as soon as the surface of the waters were disturbed I am no longer your brother I am no longer your sister move from out of my way as I seek my blessing yesterday we were friends dying together but today because of this one rumor we are now enemies man was now selfishly seeking 
to beat the other to his own healing. It was the pool of empty promises. It was the pool of des desperation. Let the church remember that whether you are paralyzed, whether you are diseased, whatever your ailment, whatever your malady, whatever your sickness, whatever your constraint, we are all sinners saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. There was a song that says, in Christ there is no east or west. Having left Jacob's well, where Jesus changed the life of a woman, he came now to Jerusalem. Verse 3 of chapter 5 tells us, In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. The word impotent is an interesting word. The word impotent means weak, feeble, without strength, powerless. In a very spiritual sense, the word is often used to describe those who have not yet become partakers of the nature of Christ. Without a relationship with Christ, you are impotent. It troubles me because, believe it or not, there are persons who are going to church every week, but they are impotent. There are persons who are calling on the name of Jesus, but they are impotent, weak without strength another meaning for the word impotent is the inability to bear fruit may i suggest to the church that there are many who are coming to church many who have the bibles in their hands but they are not bearing fruit for jesus Some men who leave their, who are in their households, but they are emotionally impotent. There are some men or women who have high positions, but they are morally impotent. There are some people in church, but they are spiritually impotent. Some have feet, but they cannot walk. Ears, but they cannot hear. Impotent. To the world, they are good Christians, but they are very, very sick. What was worse was the fact that these impotent men and women who came to the pool, sought a remedy, sought to use a rumor to cure their problems. The rumor is found in verse 4. It says, For an angel went down at certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then, first after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Some are seeking some other kind of remedy for their spiritual impotence, their spiritual malady, other than the remedy that is found in the Word of God. There are some who are satisfied with taking a church office. Some are merely satisfied with giving a large love offering. Others are satisfied with good church attendance. But I heard somewhere that the power of the church is not church attendance. The power of the church is not how much you give. The power of the church is not how well you sing. 
The power of the church is the Holy Ghost working in your life. When we seek after rumors to cure our problems, then we believe in the notion that says, whosoever comes first. Whosoever comes to church at 9 a.m. Whosoever can give the largest offering. Whosoever can sing the best. Then that person is entering the kingdom first. Can you see them at the pool? Those who cannot walk, they stumble, crawl upon those like themselves. Verse 5 says, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had now been a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The word having, which, become, which comes before an infirmity, means to be held, to be seized, to be imprisoned. This man was enduring 38 years of weakness. 38 years of near immobility 38 years of powerlessness 38 years of pitiful living 38 years of having a disability 38 years of getting used to being impotent 38 years of being patronized 38 years of being stepped on and over. 38 years of being ridiculed. 38 years of infirmed living. May I ask the church, how long have you been sitting at your pool? How long have you been satisfied with making terrible decisions? How long have you been relying on your own goodness, your own righteousness? How long have you been crippled by disappointment? How long have you been neglecting your duty, men, as the priest of your home? How long have you been rendered immobile by careless living? How long have you been living as a slave to your own secret sins? How long have you been standing in line waiting for a rumor to be true? The Bible says when Jesus saw him. The Bible says when Jesus saw him. For you, have, you may have been informed for 10, 20, 30 years, decades, you may have been stumbling from one defeat to the next. You may think that you are lost in the crowd of the church, but praise be to God, Jesus sees the sinner in a crowd. In the midst of the hustle and bustle, Jesus always sees the sinner needing a savior. You are never lost in the crowd with Jesus, for he is always passing by. Jesus asked him a very potent question. Jesus said to the man, Wilt thou be made? Wilt thou be made whole? There are no words in the Bible that are inconsequential. Every word, every phrase, every question has bearing for us here today. You will notice that Jesus did not ask the man, Wilt thou be made well? But instead he asked him, Wilt thou be made whole? 
Why did Jesus ask the impotent man this question? Is it possible to be paralyzed for 38 years and not want to be made well? One writer suggests that perhaps the man had gotten used to his way of life. Perhaps the paralyzed man's disability was his livelihood. He also says perhaps he was not prepared to meet the challenges of a new life for there are many people even in church who are sick and want to remain sick this is true of the physical sick for there are many people who get the most attention when they are not doing so well this is true for the spiritually sick for many of us have become comfortable with this easy life that we live and we don't wish to change it many this is also true of many sick and dying churches for there might be churches who believe that jesus may not want to disturb them just allow them to continue believing what they believe continue doing what they want to do but Jesus asked the man, Wilt thou be made whole? In the original language, there is a word used. The word is called genomai. The word genomai means to come into existence, to be created. And so, Pastor McLean, my Bible is telling me that Jesus, in asking the man, Wilt thou be made whole? Jesus was essentially asking him, do you want me to recreate you? Is the church listening to me? Jesus therefore asked the man, you have tried all you can. You have sought after rumors about the pool. You have come to the pool day and night for 38 years. Your condition has left you broken. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. So Jesus is asking us even today, do you want to be recreated? Have you been coming to church because it seems like the right thing to do? Have you been only satisfied with carrying your Bible in your hand, but never in your heart? Have you been leaving, man, your family altar unoccupied? Have you been carrying around an unforgiving heart? Have you been fighting depression? Have you been downtrodden? Have you been stumbling from one spiritual defeat to the next? Have you been crying yourself to sleep? Have you been fearful because of, of an unloving and unforgiving world? Have you found yourself in a routine by the pool? Trusting in false promises. Seeking after false hope. Loving sin. Cherishing iniquity. You come to the pool beside the sheep market but standing before you is the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world verse 7 the impotent man answered him sir i have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while i am coming another steppeth down before me Standing before him was the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Standing before him was the one who spake and it was done. The one who commanded and it stood fast. Standing before him was the one whose very garments had power to heal. Standing before him was the one who commands the host of heaven. But this man was so impotent that he continued to believe in the rumor 
Sir, I have no man. The sooner we learn that the answer to our problems does not rest with what we think, but rests with Jesus Christ, it will be the better for us. We cannot link our salvation to those who are sinful like we are, to the good that you think you can do. My best happens when Jesus lives through me. I like verses 8 and 9. Because verses 8 and 9 is where the miracle happens. Verse 8 says, Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately, my brothers and sisters, at the sound of Jesus' voice, when Jesus uttered the words, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Every sinew, every muscle, every ligament, every bone, every joint, every nerve, every vessel recognized the voice of the one who spake and it was done. The one who said, let there be and there was. This voice was the same voice who said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be, speak, and it was done. Say, the same voice was now declaring to this impotent man, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately, for sometimes God works immediately. Sometimes God works in three days or four days or seven days, but he's always on time. When, why did Jesus, why did Jesus declare to this man, take up thy bed and walk? Jesus declared this to the man for one important reason. You see, this morning, the bed took the man to the pool. But after Jesus spoke to him, after Jesus divested the virtue and power that rests with him, after Jesus met this man, the man is now carrying the bed. Somebody say amen. amen. For Jesus does not want us to forget where we are coming from. And so when they see you on the streets and they say, did we not see you on the bed yesterday? You can stand like the brave and declare that there is a God who is still the bomb in Gilead. There is a God who still speaks and it is done. There is a God who still has power over the elements, even the elements of our very souls. You can declare, did when they say to you, did, did you not last week used to be the same brother who we saw in the bar drinking? Were you not that sister who was carousing day and night? Were you not the one who had nothing? You can confidently say, I have met a man called Jesus. My mouth is no longer full of complaints. My mouth is no longer full of tail bearing. I only have praises for Jesus Christ. Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. It is my belief that this command is to every lethargic Christian. This command is to everyone who is halting between two opinions. This command is to every victim of abuse, every habitual drug user, every professed Christian, every promiscuous man or woman, every man who is a womanizer, every tail bearer, 
Everyone who is lonely, depressed, suicidal, take up your testimony and walk for Jesus. Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. The man with the bad temper rises. The one who used to be a drunkard rises. The Sabbath breaker rises. The one who used to be a liar rises. The gossiper stops. The liar now tells the truth. How long have you been sitting at the pool? There is one man who is passing by your pool this afternoon. His name is Jesus. Wilt thou be made whole? Are you satisfied with only giving a financial offering, but do you want to give your heart as well? Wilt thou be made whole? Are you satisfied with coming to church just because it is a ritualistic exercise? Or do you want to step into God's house with your mouth full of praises? How long? Are you satisfied with rushing through your day from one duty to the next? Or do you want to live a life of power? Are you satisfied with reading your Bible just to say you've read it? Or do you want to open your Bibles and find Jesus on every page? Do you want to merely pray with your families, men, only when you come to church? Or do you want to go back to the family altar? Do you want to be satisfied with being a part-time Christian? Or do you want your children to see Jesus in you wherever you go? Are you satisfied with only existing? Or do you want to live? In the book Education, page 57, the greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole. Men who will stand for the right Oh, the heavens fall. Before we sing that wonderful song, men, how was it with you this week? Did you wrestle in prayer for your children? Did you pause to pray with your wife? Did you call a brother or a sister who you did not see in church last Sabbath just to encourage and pray with them? Did you do something that you're not proud of? Did you go on your knees and ask for forgiveness? Did you sleep well this week? Was your pillow wet with tears? Are you satisfied that you are doing all you can so that your family is in the kingdom of God? When was the last time you told your family that you loved them? Pass me not, O gentle Savior, is our song. It is not merely a song to be sung. It is a prayer to be prayed. For the words say, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humblest cry. While on others thou art calling, do 
not pass me by. The praise team will help us to sing this. May it be the prayer of every heart, every man, every woman, every young person, every child. May our prayer be today, pass us not, O gentle Savior. Hear our humblest cry. voices together Savior Savior hear our humble cry Jesus while on others while on others Lord thou art calling do not pass me by We're pausing and the church is standing with me because today is men's day of prayer it is an appropriate time for us to lift our men in prayer ladies if you're standing be beside or be behind a gentleman won't you rest your hand on his shoulder won't you rest your hand on his shoulder Declaring to him that you are praying for him. I'm going to sing the chorus one more time. And then we pray. opportunity for a man or a woman to make a decision thousands of years ago Jesus was praying the Bible describes that his sweat was as heavy as drops of blood there was set before him the cross of Calvary and it was time for a decision to be made. I praise God that Jesus made a decision to say, not my will, but Father, thy will be done. 
he made that decision so that someone else this very hour can make a decision for him even before we pray we ask that you walk to the altar so that we can include you in this prayer signifying that you are making one decision one decision to begin a journey with Jesus we'll sing the chorus one more time and then we pray every other voice is hushed and in quietness we wait patiently before thee the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God we're happy to know Heavenly Father that you are still in the business of saving souls we're happy to know today that you have called men to stand like the brave with their faces to the foe. When we look around our island, our beautiful island, Jamaica land we love, we recognize that the devil is wroth with our men. Young men are being used to kill and to destroy. But in the name of Jesus this afternoon, we declare holy war against the devil. We say, Satan, take your filthy paws of God's young men. We rebuke every act of violence today. For that man who has a gun in his hand right now, the blood of Jesus is against you. For that man who has that machete who is ready to chop somebody, the blood of Jesus is against you. For that man who has the knife in his hand who is ready to stab someone, we declare the blood of Jesus against you. We say to you in the name of Jesus, drop that gun, drop that machete, drop that knife and run to Jesus before it is too late. And so Lord, we ask you to have mercy on our nation. Many of our political leaders are here today. And at this time, I want to present them into your capable hands. Dr. Peter Phillips, the leader of the opposition, is here. He has brought his team with him. I pronounce your blessings upon them, dear God. The Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, I ask you to guide him, Father. Politicians need Jesus. Because, Lord, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. One politician said recently we needed divine intervention. He was ridiculed, O oh Father. But I'm not being political, but we need divine intervention. Because demonic forces have been let loose upon us. But we know that you're capable, Lord, to stop the crime and the bloodshed we thank you for your spoken word thank you for this young man who delivered the thus saith the word of God we pray that you'll bless him father and help him not to look to the east nor to the west but to keep his eyes focused on Jesus then we pray for those who have not yet surrendered their hearts to you 
Many are here today who need to make their calling and election sure. We beg you, Lord, help them to turn to you before it is too late. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for all that you continue to do as we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. As I indicated earlier on, we are privileged today to have with us Dr. Peter David Phillips, leader of the opposition. He should have been with us earlier on, but he had a number of things doing, but he's finally here. Dr. Phillips, welcome to the Mandeville Church. And at this time, brothers and sisters, I crave your indulgence as he greets us. And after that, we will close off and send you home. Dr. Phillips, please come, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor. Good morning, church, or good afternoon. I, I want to thank you for the opportunity to worship here with you today. We are late because we had an earlier meeting with the teachers in the parish of Manchester. And it was, in fact, a very fulfilling engagement because I think, as you would all agree, there is no more important task apart from worship than bringing up the child in the way that they should go. And it is a national challenge that ought not to divide us on the basis of political persuasion and is absolutely urgent if we are to secure the better country which we seek, a country which works for all our people and is not defeated by matters like crime and poverty and inequality and moral wrong. I want to thank you also because I am convinced that the church and the message of the Master Jesus is an essential need for our country because as the good book says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And now more than ever, Jamaica needs the divine intervention, the message of the Almighty, the message of Jesus to enable us to fix what is wrong in our country. I know it's not good to trespass on the patience of people who are waiting for lunch. <laughs> because as they have said, a hungry man is an angry man. So I want to thank you again for this opportunity and to convey greetings to all of you because together the mission that is before us is one that needs united effort under the guidance of God Almighty. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you Dr. Phillips. God bless you and your team for joining us. We'll invite the praise team. Oh, the connection cards. Yes. Thank you very much Sister Sandra. All those persons who filled out their connection cards, please take them to yes, take them to the ushers, and you have some gifts that are waiting on you. So please take these connection cards to the ushers, and they will give you some very lovely gifts. So please, all those persons who would have filled out their connection cards, take them to the ushers, and you will get your gifts. The gentlemen, the praise team, will lead us out as we officially close off the service. This is a song with blessings we pray as from thy 